Flying Romanos from a CD called Daisies in the Wind, Volume 7, Dancing with Friends. And that's music written by Elizabeth, or Liz, I'm going to call her Liz this morning, Liz Goosens, who's in the studio with me this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Pleasure to have you here. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. I, you know, I was telling you off air that it's just fun music. I mean, very light and very easy. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what is... Tell us. Give, I mean, not everybody is familiar with English country dancing, so oh, tell right. us what, what, what it's all about. English country dancing is a very old form of dancing. At the end of the evening in the court of Elizabeth I, they would finish an evening with some English country dancing. And in 1651 was the first publication by a publisher in London, John Playford, who actually published his first volume. And in that volume, you had dances that were being danced in that time period. And so he published almost every year from 1651 to 1728. So it's this huge, huge body of dances. Now, those publications were <clears throat> the dances that we now call historic dances. And so they would have been the dances that would have been danced in the court or maybe in the um, home of um, an earl or a lord. And it moved down into the villages. Then there's also another whole body of English country dancing that we call traditional or community dances. And those dances would have been particular to a particular region, a particular village. And those dances, of course, were very well known. So people might be finishing dinner, they, someone would have a fiddle, they'd move back the chairs, and they would dance. Let Cumberland. Loose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd dance Cumberland Square Eight, or they'd dance Wheelshire Six Hand Reel, or they'd dance the Dorset Four Hand Reel. Mm -hmm. So that's a really different body of dances. Anyway, the dancing was very, very popular all through 1600s, 1700s, into the 1800s. And then, really, as the coupled dancing started, the waltzes, the polka, it lost a lot of its impetus and, and its people's interest in it. it. What we're doing now is really a revival. Mm -hmm. There was Cecil Sharp, who in the late 1800s, he's an Englishman, a music, music ethnomusicologist, and he started collecting songs from the countryside in England and came upon dances as well a very traditional form of dancing, which is team dancing, Morris dancing. And he then found the Playford manuscripts. <clears throat> and the notation in the manuscripts is very cryptic. So he spent a lot of time trying to figure out what do all these words mean? How does this dance work? Mm -hmm. And so in the early 1900s, he published um, six volumes of his interpretations of some of the dances from the original Playford manuscript. And for a long time, in the revival part, that was kind of the Bible of the dances. But um, in the 1950s, 60s, there was another Englishman by the name of Patrick Sheldon Shaw. He had grown up, he was a folk musician, a dancer, a composer. He began writing English country dances, and music and dances, and really kind of opened the current explosion, where now, I mean, there's so many new dances being written, so much music being written, that it's just, wow, amazing. And so that's what this CD is, some of that. You know, you're, you're, you're incredibly knowledgeable about this, <laughs> truthfully. I, <laughs> I've been I doing it for a long you know, time. You, you know something about it, you'd have a little bit about it, but you, you've been involved for 40 years in the style of music, so what, what, tell us about when you became interested in it and how. Yeah. Um, the co-founders of our group were John Trevenin and David Williams. Your group. Say the group. Village Green English Country Dancers. There you go. Okay. We, of course, didn't start off as the Village Green English Country Dancers. There used to be, I think it was called the Folk Arts Council. They organized folkways shows a couple a year. And David Williams was very involved in the arts community of Winnipeg at that time. And they were organizing a British folkway show. So he said to his friend John, we should have some English country dancing. They had both been to um, Pinewoods Dance Camp, which is a camp that runs all summer. They have various week-long programs. It's close to Plymouth. Mm -hmm. So John, who was a Scottish country dancer, I was also a Scottish country dancer at that point in time, so was David, got a group of, I think, 10 of us together, and we learned three English country dances. We were part of this folkway show 
he got together a group of men who are became the Village Green Moors men, who are still dancing today as well. And uh, John's wife, Betty Trevenin, was an elementary school teacher. So we actually got together a group of um, children from her class and did a maypole dance. So we just loved it so much. I think I'm really bad with dates. That was the spring of 1974. Mm -hmm. The next year, we said, you know, we should do some of this. It's really fun. We met a few times. And then the following fall, we said, we want to do more of this. And so one of the you people... the fever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cut the fever. I think that's what happens. You're just like, it's, you know, as I was saying to you earlier, eh, you know, winter, it's cold, it's dark, I'm tired, I'm not going out. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you go. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Within five minutes... You don't feel tired anymore, you have a smile on your face, and you're just having a wonderful time. So that's what English country dancing is all about. Mm -hmm. In some ways, actually, the name of that CD, Dancing with Friends, to me is just, that's what English country dancing is all about. It's dancing with friends. As you can tell, it's very... Not all the music is really happy. Some of it is less so, but... Yes, it's, it's not, not sad, but less, less, less happy. Less happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to mention, I'm in the studio with Liz Goose, and she's written some uh, music that's going to be uh, performed. It's being launched this weekend with a group from New York. They're uh, flying in. What, ironically, they're called the Flying Romanos. When I first heard the name, it sounded more like a trapeze artist to me, the Flying Romanos. So tell us about this. Uh, well, I'll give details more about the uh, concert and the dancing right. this weekend. Tell us about the Flying Romanos. Well, um... I first met them in the fall of 2008. Myself and two friends had gone to New York. Well, of course, what are you going to do when you go to a place you don't know? You're going to go to an English country dance. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, in New York, no doubt. I would skip all the jazz. I'd skip all the class. I would go well, to English country dance. No doubt about it. <laughs> we did some of the other stuff, too. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, of course, yes. But we did go to an English country dance, and the Flying Romanos were playing. And the three of us just go, wow. We need to bring them to Winnipeg. Are they like the English uh, they're, dancing they're band? one of the groups. I mean, there are so many good groups, actually, but mm -hmm. I certainly think that they are one of the best. Um, our group did a fundraising thing the following fall, and we brought them to Winnipeg in 2010. So they were here seven years ago, pretty much the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and they were just playing for our weekend. And it so happens that the caller, who we have also brought in this um, time is Sharon Green from California and she was also here that time too seven years ago and then when I was looking at okay so I have some friends who are going we have to record more of your music all right all right all right um, I contacted the Romanos and I sent them music and they decided they were interested in recording it. So that's how it all happened. And it's being launched this weekend. And now it's, it's a whole weekend of festivities. It's not it, like it's not like it's a one-day CD launch. It's three full days of dancing and festivities. And tell us, give us a few more details about sure, that. Sure, I will. Tonight, there is a Contra community dance at Harrow United Church. The doors open at 7, dancing from 7.30 till 10. And the dances are straightforward. They're all going to be called. There will be lots of experienced dancers there. So really, if you have, you know, if you can walk from your house to your car, you'd love it. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, Michael has said, the music is happy, so you'll go home happy. Um, Saturday morning, there is a workshop. Then Saturday afternoon is free. Saturday night is the launch, which is actually sold out. Which we're happy about, but sad about. Mm -hmm. and Next time you have to make it a bigger venue. We will. Yes, mm -hmm. I know. MTS Center or something. <laughs> <laughs> Think big. Think, Think big. big. <laughs> and um, Sunday there's another workshop, and actually there's a music workshop as well. There is a group here um, we play um, for all, all our social evenings. We don't play on a regular week, week basis, but five or six times a year at the Fine Companions play. And we will be having a music workshop with the Romanos to finish off on Sunday evening. So that's a recap of the whole weekend. So do you have a website that people can check out? We do. It is villagegreenenglishdancers.org, I think. Did I get it right? Yes. Good. <laughs> yes, she did. But, I, <laughs> but actually, if you just uh, Google Village Green or English Country Dancing in Winnipeg, it should come up. Mm -hmm. 
and you can get details about all this this weekend's yes. stuff going on. And so for those, we'll wrap up with one more thing. For those people that have never tried it, how do you? How would you try to? What would you sell it to them as? How would you get them excited about it? It's just fun, mm -hmm. and the music is lively. Um, the the friendships that you make, and you know, long standing friendships are just really amazing. Um, yeah, so just because it's fun. And it's a very inclusive form of dance. Um, so that's, for me, it's another aspect of it that's great. So for dancers of all levels, beginners, people who have never done it before, people that have maybe done it in their homes or done it a few times, it's a welcome to all levels. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. And we regularly meet on Wednesdays, although we're almost finished for this season. But come out tonight, give it a try, and then we can give you information about our season next year. Yeah. Dancing is always a good thing. Good it for fitness, is. good for fun, good for the soul. Well, actually, Absolutely. they do say, in fact, there has been research that dancing is one of the best activities for your brain because not only are there patterns, but you're, you're combining it with physical movement, which is apparently like the physical aspect of it as well as the mental aspect of it is really important. Thank you, Dr. Liz Goosens here. As you <laughs> I've been in conversation with Liz Goosens. She's a local musician and composer. We've been talking about her CD launch, which takes place this weekend. Tomorrow, uh, Flying Romanos, fly, two of the Flying Romanos are here. The other two are flying in. Hopefully, they'll make it in. They'll make it in. Not even hopefully. They're going to make it in. And uh, again, that's uh, the Village Green... English country dancers. Okay, so here we have uh, one more track. Speaking of dancing, maybe we'll do some dancing in the studio right now. This is the, uh, I played you the first 100, that's the first track, and this is the final track called The Next 100. Thank you. 